a while now on our Mystery Monday series, we have been looking into missing people from national parks here in the United States. Of course, we started off looking at the Bennington Triangle over in Vermont. We then talked about a case that happened in the Colorado River many, many years ago. We also spoke about a person who went missing near Yosemite. And now we are on the West Coast at the Olympic National Park. A lot like the Bennington Triangle, the Olympic National Park also has legends of groups of people going missing in a certain time frame. But today, we're going to talk about some of the information released about the park that I personally find very interesting and someone who did go missing but was eventually rescued. Olympic National Park is located in Washington State on the Olympic Peninsula. It became a protected land on the 29th of June, 1938. However, in 1976, the United Nations designated the land as a biosphere reserve, and then in 1981, it was designated as a World Heritage Site. The park itself brings in about 3.5 million people a year. Now, if you're like me, anytime you see the UN, you get a little suspicious. And so knowing that the UN was involved or has been involved in the Olympic National Park opened up Pandora's box for me, so to speak, and brought me to another interesting discovery about Olympic National Park. Now, when I research certain topics, especially certain areas of the world, I will often go and listen to locals talk about their experiences being in the area. Because I am from the total opposite end of the continent of North America from Washington State, obviously I don't know a lot of the legends that encompass this surrounding. I already knew that they suspected Bigfoot lived up in Washington State, but honestly, we have legends of Bigfoot here in Georgia too on the Appalachian Trail. Now if you're like me, and you probably are since you're on this channel, you probably suspect that a lot of these national parks have been given the protection of being a national park because of, we'll just say, cult rituals. I also do believe that this land holds portals in other slightly psychedelic things that the average person is not privy to. But what I found interesting when I was listening to people from the area speak about Washington National Park is that just a few months ago, in September of 2021, rumors started to go around about happening at the park again. Yes, you heard that right. Again. Now, in fairness, anybody who has ever read Old Man in the Sea knows that nature versus man, nature always wins. And I do believe that some of the missing people cases that we have in national parks are simply that. Like the case we're going to talk about a little bit later today, I think some people just happen to fall into a ravine or get lost in the terrain, and then sadly their life is taken from them from the elements of nature. And because the terrain is so hard for the rescuers, to navigate, sometimes those bodies are just not found, meaning that I do believe some of these missing people cases are literally just accidents. Nothing sinister, just an accident. And so when I talk about the rumors surrounding Washington National Park, I'm not talking about conspiracy theorists who think that every single person that goes missing has to be the victim of something nefarious. What I'm talking about is the suspected amount of bodies, both human and animal, that allegedly are buried in the park. Human beings and living animals that were used for particular rituals. Now, if you have common sense, I guess you would know that even for your run of the mill serial killer, a national park would probably be a great place for a body dump. Again, a lot of these national parks have terrain that most people cannot navigate. So, if you're able, and if you know the park and you're able to utilize that terrain, it's highly likely that sometimes these bodies, again, will never be discovered. But it does seem that residents in the area are aware of something very, very sinister utilizing this park. Ted Gunderson was born on the 7th of November, 1928, and passed away on the 31st of July, 2011. Gunderson joined the Federal Bureau of Investigation in 1951. Some of his most famous cases include the passing of Marilyn Monroe, 
and the assassination of JFK. Two people who we know didn't leave the Earth plane like they say they left the Earth plane. It just so happens that Ted Gunnarsson was one of us. Because he worked for the FBI, he was privy to a lot of information that the rest of us just have to dig and look for. Many people might recognize Ted Gunnarsson because he was heavily involved in the satanic panic of the 1980s, which most of us know was not the conspiracy theory that they wanted us to believe it was. Ted Gunnarsson was of the opinion, was using Washington National Park as a dumping ground specifically in Mason County. He believed that this would account for the countless bodies buried all over the park. And for me, this is probably one of the biggest reasons why so many people go missing in these parks, not just the Olympic National Park, but a lot of the parks. And as we come to this great awakening, I think that this is something really important for us to look at and to understand. Now, unfortunately, due to YouTube and its platform, there's not a whole lot I can go into when it comes to the actual rituals, but hopefully by giving you some of these leads, this will help you in your own research. Now again, as I said, I do believe that this is one of the main reasons why so many people go missing in the park, but like I said in the beginning of the video, there is the element of the danger of nature. Some people just go missing because again, it's an accident. And today I'm gonna to talk about a person, a young person who went missing at Olympic National Park but not for nefarious reasons. And in fact, he was eventually rescued. And so I think it's kind of important to also talk about these cases as well. Even though this is a mystery series, I do wanna talk about the people that have been found and the heroic rescue that the rescue workers went on, the missions they went on to save this one human life. Because for however many bad people there are in the world, honestly, there are a lot more good. Jaron Fisher was reported missing by his family on September 16th of this last year, 2021. Now again, as I said earlier, this was around the time that the rumors started again in the area that Olympic National Park was being used for cult rituals. Jaron was supposed to go on a solo hiking trip that started on the 8th of September. He started at Graves Creek Tailhead, and his wilderness permit was set for September 8th through the 12th, meaning he was supposed to leave the park on the 12th. But four days later, when Jaron had not shown back up home, his family did report him missing. Jaron's car was still parked at the trailhead where his journey was due to begin. This was evidence that Jaron probably had not left the park and was somewhere out there in the wilderness. Because Jaron had given over his itinerary to the park rangers, the rescuers knew where to go and search. Now, I personally have mixed feelings about this. I understand that this, again, gave the rescuers an area to concentrate on to try to find Jaron, especially since Jaron was alone at least somebody knew where he was supposed to be. However, because these parks are sometimes super nefarious, I don't know if I would wanna be handing over my itinerary to just anyone. But luckily for Jaron, his rescue searchers were good people and were genuinely trying to find him. Now, as I said in our last episode, when I think of a September day, I think of a very hot, hot, humid day. However, September up in Washington state is cold and rainy. Just like our last case, the rescue workers were working heavily against the elements of nature, not just the park itself, but the weather. But luckily for Jaron, who himself was a very experienced hiker, 11 days after he was reported missing, he was found. It appears that Jaron had fallen into a ravine where he was stuck. He was found by the rescue workers yelling his name. When he heard his name, he called back for help. Because the ravine was so steep, the U.S. Coast Guard had to be called in to help rescue Jaron. 
It took the air crew about 30 minutes to locate the search team. The helicopter dropped in a rescue swimmer who was able to get to Jaren and pull him out of the ravine by the helicopter. Jaren then was taken to the local hospital where he was treated for minor, minor injuries. Now again, with this episode, some people might be disappointed because I didn't actually talk about someone who did go missing. But again, I think it is important to also talk about the people who are found. And I also wanted to take a moment to talk about Ted Gunnarsson's work to give us another idea of what we're dealing with when it comes to future cases that we are going to be covering on this channel regarding Olympic National Park as well as other national parks. I am so happy for Jaron and his family that he was located. I know that must have been very, very scary for both him and his loved ones. And so the fact that he was rescued is incredible. And I'm so, so, so happy again for him and his family. All right, you guys, I hope that you're having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. I have a really busy week ahead. If you're watching this at its normal time at 10 o'clock on Monday, you will know that I've already been on Aquarius Rising Africa, where we were talking about Catherine de Medici. I'm going to be doing some more shows with Catherine this week. Just so much, so much fun stuff. And I look forward to hearing how your week is going. I know everybody is super stressed out. I know we're so low energy and we just want everything to be done. But my friends, I do think that things are almost done and the best is truly yet to come. All right. I hope you're having a wonderful Monday and I will talk to you soon. Bye.